I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 4 of the Gauge 1 Prairie Tank Build. Right, the last thing we're ready to do on uh, these wheels now, let's get that in focus there, is to finally put the flange, to mill this flange on. So what we've got to do now is so put it in the chuck there, like you see over here, we set, we set it up in the chuck, and we're now just going to skim this face off down to one and a half mil thickness there. So just come in and start the cut now. So this is going to take several cuts, several swipes each to do this. You can always tell when you're getting near the flange thickness. I don't know if the camera's picked that up, but you can start to see the spokes up here. see we've just broken through and you can see the spokes there. I'll just stop the machine so you can see that. And there's our spokes starting to appear. So we've got about another um, 40 thou to come off so that'll just work out just nice. And there you can see now the wheels And there is our certainly recognisable now as a locomotive wheel. So the only thing we've got to do now is to bring this flange down to the right correct diameter and put a slight radius on here. Okay, they've all been um, machined now, all the wheels. And as I mentioned before, what we've got to do now is just get this flange right relative to this cone. I'll just check my dimensions and this depth needs to be 79 thou. Okay we've got our wheel set up now and spinning and this gives us the opportunity while we turn this flange down to the right diameter relative to the cone it also gives us the opportunity just to check that this is all running, that this outer cone is running concentric now with the with the centre holders drilled. So we can just give this a little I left enough material, we've got plenty of material on this cone, so I left enough material on here just to give this a little skin, just to make sure it is running concentric. And by the sound of it, that's running okay. Let's just check this depth dimension on here as a double check. And that's about just about 79, just give or take a thou. So that's okay. And we're at the right width. So the last thing to do is to just put the final profile on the flange. This is where we have to be careful now. There's just a slight radius we put on here, like a lead in. A slight radius there. That's looking pretty good. I'm not really pressing hard with the file, I'm just letting the rotation do the work. I'll give it a final polish, final clean. These outer wheels are going to be painted black. Let's have a quick look at that.
now you can just see this is a nice push fit on there so that's all concentric and there is our completed wheel with the profile and we've just got some slight radius and slight slight radius to stroke chamfer and a slight radius coming up here but there is our basically our finished wheel got the wheels now to a nice uh, reasonable condition the next thing we need to think about is putting the wheels on the axles and I think as I mentioned before I've already made three of the axles for the driving wheels these are the exact length that they need to be but one of the um, things I have to consider now is quartering but it's just worth explaining what quartering is to those who may be not too familiar about it on any locomotive the wheels are quartered on any steam locomotive or any locomotive that has connecting rods and my understanding is that with quartering you don't get what you call a bottom or top dead center what it means is that the piston on either side one piston on either side of the chassis is in a position that when you open the regulator the steam will enter the cylinder and push the piston it just means that the train the locomotive doesn't get stuck without without any means of actually turning the piston without any means of forcing the piston that's why the quarter did. when these wheels are in this position for example the piston on this side is in one position the wheels on this side the piston is say in a halfway position so what it means is that say when you let steam in one of the pistons is able to able to move and still get the locomotive um, moving cover this in more detail later on is I use um, there's a few ways you can do this my method is I use a pin and a, a screw in here and that locks it and that it's quartered other people rely on a push fit and using a glue uh, a, a locking glue to, to hold it um, for me that doesn't seem to work very well because yes a push fits fine when you put the wheels on and they're going to stay on but I found you need to take the wheels on you need to take the wheels off and they paint it you strip it down you need to you know you need to take the wheels off again and this constant taking the wheels on and off actually ta starts to work loose so with quartering the way I do it here um, and a screw and a pin it stays in and it's fixed uh, first thing I'm going to do is on these axles we need to have a pin through here one that way and one this way 90 degrees to each other and to do that that's quite otherwise to drill a hole in there and a hole in the bar is going to be quite tricky so I have a little jig to help me do this and what happens this fits exactly in the jig like so and there's a little hole in there to drill through and there is a little hole in there to drill through so that gives me, me my two positions at 90 degrees to each other I just turn it around and we get the other hole at 90 degrees These are our holes that have been drilled in the drill jig so we'll just take this out and show you what we have and see there's a little hole drilled there and then we've got one uh, right angles 
to it drill there. These, the position of these holes is the depth of the wheel. Because what we're going to do next is turn a shoulder exactly to where that hole finishes. Turn that shoulder, which is at the depth, and it, that original drill, <laughs> that original drill jig, and you can see that there. There's the hole just there. So that original drill jig, the hole is drilled just on that shoulder. So when we put the other wheels together, have a reasonable fit on there. So there's the, there's the wheels on position now. So here's the first stage completed now. We've got the wheels on the track. Still a long way to go, but it always starts to get a little bit more interesting and starting to take shape once you've got the wheels on. <laughs> 